This week on Losers of Initiative. It, it, I, 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 no one knows. It is. You will see when you get there. I, I just grab her shoulders and I shake her. <laughs> Pull yourself together, woman. <laughs> yeah. As I'm shaking her, tell me what what do, what do you mean? I don't know. You you are speaking in tongues. <laughs> He's just making it worse. She's just a, a bobbling, sobbing, wobbly mess. All right, so the sound of marching feet behind Zerosi gives you gives you pause as, as Big Johan, as he turns to look at you at first in anger and then a, a smile comes across his face. You quickly go, what? And do a quick shoot over your shoulder and you see ten armored men, like humans. But they all look, you know, brigandy looking. Not, not good looking, organized, like, hey, these are good guys. These are definitely some of Johan's men. About how far away? Uh, about 60 feet. Okay. Yeah, they're 60 feet behind you, and Big Johan on the Mastodon is 30 feet in front of you. And his his action, because we finished around with him going last, is to greet them with a shout. All right, boys, let them have it. And he just kind of turns back to face Grug and Ovac. All right, let's roll initiative. 13. 4. 7. 8. So, <laughs> so uh, Ovac and Zerosi. Okay, so all both of the ogres that were in front of gone. us are now gone. Toast, yep. And then how far is is uh the Mastodon and uh through through the you know the the chaos of the combat, uh, they're about 60 feet away now. Within your hammer's range. Yeah, I'm just gonna chuck my hammer at uh at Johan. Yes, thank he, you. Thank yeah, you. He kind of turns yeah. back around from shouting his command and smiling. He kind of turns back around to put his focus on you, just in time to see a hammer flying at him. Throwing hammer is negative five. Negative five. So that that does hit him. And then I do fourteen times three. All right, so 42 damage to Big Johan. Boom, that kind of takes him by surprise, uh, as it should. Oh! And when your hammer hits, the because it's got dwarven runes all over it and everything, yep. as as your hammer hits those runes, you know, besides the, the, the sort of shock wave of the game, the runes kind of light up. Not like a blinding flash, but definitely a noticeable sort of wah. A brightness to right, it. Right, when it hits when it hits any sort of giant or anything like that. Ogres, giants, things like that. Because that's basically what it was meant to be. In the hands of a dwarf fighting giants, which is, in this case, perfect. Perfect. It's what it's meant to do. All right, so, ooh, lots of damage. All right, Zerosi, yes. rock and a hard place. <laughs> Zerosi will cast invisibility <laughs> and go down one of the alleyways. Okay, so you cast invisibility and then take off running down an alley. For the for the record, because I know we haven't mentioned it, like I have a lot of spell slots. Yeah, you're four four first, four second, four third, four fourth, four fifth, and one sixth. And also, you know, sort of a house rule that we have is you can use a higher level spell slot to cast a lower level spell. And I don't do any of this bullcrap of memorizing spells because that limits wizard to beyond belief. So. All right, so you cast invisibility and take off running. All right, uh, at Johan's prodding and, and speech, short and sweet, uh, the, the ten armored figures just sort of start running toward the fight, which is past Johan. Now, they're 60 feet away from Johan, and they're armored figures, so their full round of running basically gets them to him. So they're, they're done. Uh, big Johan... Reaches in. Uh, make a uh, intelligence roll there, uh, Ovac. Do I want high or low? You want low. Lower than your intelligence. 
Okay, well, it's spot on with my That's good enough. Okay, so you notice as, as Johan pulls another boulder out, the bag that he's been pulling the boulders out from is now empty. He's throwing his last boulder at you. It's flaccid. Yeah, the flaccid bag from his boulder. Ah, natural 20. All right, so that's what a you get for calling him flaccid. Solid yeah. smack from the boulder uh, right onto Ovac's face. Well, maybe not your face. Uh, 14 damage. Okay. So could have been better. 14 damage. Smash. You know, once again, you raise your shield because, you know, boulders eh, don't fly. It's fast enough where you couldn't get out of the way, but not fast enough where you can't raise your shield. Okay. Okay, so smashes into you. Crunch. So you hit him with a hammer. He hits you with a boulder. It's fair. Tit course, for tat. You did way more damage. All right, so how many hit points you got left, Ovac? I am at 45. So Ovac has 45 hit points left. All right. How far is Johan from me? Uh, I think I said, like, 50, 50 to 60. 50-ish feet. Oh, so I probably couldn't get to him and attack. Yeah, so far it's just been ranging back and forth between yeah. Johan and anybody he's been fighting, really. Yeah, I was going to say, really, the rest of the party attacked Johan one time, and apparently <laughs> it's just been ranged back and forth between <laughs> Johan and the party. Yeah. So, yeah, Well, you know, the visible party, at least. All right, so... Grug is going to take a tactical analysis. <laughs> With his eight intelligence. With his eight intelligence. Yeah, does he know what that means? Johan's right there. He's big. Johan close. We should call him big. But Grug can't attack. So I'm just going to delay. Basically stand you, my ground. It's the end of the round. What do you do? You're not going to try and move in front of me and deflect boulders? <laughs> cool, thanks. No. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean... Do I you do see ten armored figures kind of come running in your direction. Right, but he's smart enough to know that he would be outnumbered if he ran up there without any support. That's true. That's true. If he goes up and attacks Johan and then lands down next to Johan, he's smart enough to know that the Mastodon is going to, like, is going to whoop his ass, too. Which, how's the Mastodon looking now? Uh, it's hard to tell. Okay. So, Grug's going to just take a... Uh, Stay with Ovac. Yeah, he's going to take an analysis of the situation, know they're outnumbered, know that they need to stay together enough for that much, and stay next to Ovac. All right. So let's roll initiative. Six. Five. Seven. Fifteen. So you all go first. All right. Oh, let me go first. Let me go first. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right, Zorosi. So I'm going to use my 30 feet, put as much distance as I can between them, because lightning bolt... Again? So 60 feet away? Yeah. Okay. Uh, lightning Bolt has a range of 40 feet plus 10 per level. Right. So I'm still within range. Easily. This time, I'm going to Lightning Bolt starting, because they're all in a cluster now. The, right. Starting with the guys and just arcing across. Trying to get as many of them as you can as long as you include Johan. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to roll. go ahead and roll a uh, an intelligence check uh, at a five. Yeah, just roll. You want low, but you since your intelligence is ridiculous, you don't need to roll too low. Yeah, my intelligence is a 20. Yeah, modified to 20 with magical. Three. Oh he rolled a three. All right. He beat it. So you actually, uh, you're able to hit Johan and six of the ten guys. So nice. like a solid, well-placed. Yeah, talk about tactics. All right. All right. That's fine. It's all because Grug took a moment to survey. Yeah, that's right. Tactical analysis. 100%. Thanks, Grug. Yeah, bonus. Good job, Grug. Grug makes smart moves sometimes. Ooh. Damn. 34, 40, 48. Okay. So 48 damage from the lightning bolt. As I cast it, just going to yell, don't forget I'm still here. All right. So 48 damage from the lightning bolt. Of the six armored figures you hit, five of them fall to the ground. <laughs> and you hit Big Johan, and the sixth figure that you hit basically kind of stumbles for a second. Holy crap! Uh, but he's not down. All right? Wowie, wowie. So very good uh, use of your lightning bolt in that case, in that instance. All right, so Grug and Ovac. You just see this lightning bolt shoot out of an alleyway. Just rip across them, and half of the guys fall. Okay, um, I'm gonna lift up my pendant of Morden. Okay, as you catch your hammer, and oh yeah, yeah, I guess I catch that. So then I'm gonna lift up my pendant, and I'm just gonna start muttering a little prayer, and use one of its charges to cure 
serious on myself. So it's 2d8 plus 5, 17 is the max. So you you hold up the hold up the pendant of Moradin, uh, which is which is one of your magic items. Uh, yep, it's it is, my it's Moradin is my god, and so I have this special pendant that allows me to heal one person per day. Okay, it's not one person a day. Right, it's you can cast cure serious wounds on everybody, but only it can only affect a single person one time a day. So you could cast it once on Zerosi, once on Grog, and once on yourself. But you couldn't cast it twice on Zerosi in a day. All right, anyway. If I needed it twice in one day, I would be dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. I was you're, just thinking that. Zerosi is the hit point machine. Uh, not really. Okay. Okay, so. I do 16 to myself. Oh, so you heal nice. 16 hit points and catch your hammer, and your actions are done for that round. So Grug's going to look anxiously, like, look up at the mob. Still coming towards us, I would assume, ish. Uh, with that lightning bolt, they kind of stumble for stumble a second. Stumble a little bit. And then look at Ovac, and then look back at the mob. Grug, Grug, attack. Grug, no attack. Let's attack, Grug. Ah, and he's just going to sprint. Sprint in. So full you sprint. use a full movement so you can, you actually get to them in this round, but can't attack. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it is, the, it's going to be their turn. So what happens is Johan, big Johan, and his he he once again get him, boys! And as he says that, and the men, you know, his armored figures kind of charge in to engage Grug, who is running up to him. He turns the mastodon and starts leaving rather quickly. So the men, the men, uh, the armored figures uh, attack Grug. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So all five of them, they surround you and begin assailing you with their with their broadswords. Grug not scared. Uh, armor class, negative uh, nine. Grug scared. Negative seven. Uh, Grug very scared. Positive two. Negative uh, one and positive one. So two hits on Grug. 18 damage to Grug. Two, two of the five hit you for 18 damage total. And Big Johan is, is beating a hasty retreat. Running away from me? Yep. Okay. Going in the opposite direction. Basically, back the way he came. Initiative time. Six. 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 Wow. Okay. Six, six, six. Evil initiative roll. Okay, I got an eight. I thought I was going to do good. I got an eight. But I lost, so... Go ahead. Players. Grug. Grug, Grug attacked twice. Um, two separate ones? Two separate same ones. Guy? Yeah. Okay. Uh, armor class three. Miss. And armor class negative 14. Hit. Man size? Yeah, they're, they're actually human. They're, they're, they're not just man size, they're themselves size. Uh, 12 damage. Okay. Not dead. Ovac. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna run up to Grug. That would be a full move. Okay, so then no, I will not do that. <laughs> I will, I will run towards Grug. Okay. And I will throw my hammer at one of the armored whatever figures. man is standing. Okay, still. just throwing him at one of the armored figures. We'll just randomly determine which one But Grug is standing there. Oh my there. god. Oh god. That's a one. That's a miss. Okay. So the hammer just flies off, whoosh, goes like 60 feet hitting nothing, and then it kind of arcs up and it's making its way back. Oh, to so you. it's not going to like boomerang back and hit someone in the back of the head? Not much. Oh no. Sorry. <laughs> okay. And Zerosi. Uh, so if he's within range, which would be 120 feet, the Mastodon, um, I, when I when I move up so as move, much as I can. So that'll, that'll put you kind of at the edge of the alley back on the street, not too far from the action, moving 30 feet back towards the road. And you do see the Mastodon. Oh, and Johan is, ga- is galloping with away. 120 feet. Yeah, th- that's, it's within 120 feet. Okay. Uh, Zerosi is going to try and trip up the Mastodon by creating a just a sinkhole of mud in front of him okay. with transmute rock to mud. So you have a spell that transmutes the ground, the, the dirt rock ground into just this big pool of mud. Yeah. And my goal is to have it wide enough to catch him, but my main thing is just deep to, to trip up the So you're going to make it deep enough and wide enough to trip him up. Okay. Um, I'm going to make a react like a dex check for the Johan controlling the Mastodon to see if he can pull out in time. Hey-o. So the men 
that are there. Let's get some attacks here. So five of them are on uh, Grug still. Yep, still five on Grug. They're trying to... Grug like five men on him. <laughs> uh, sounds like a Thursday night. So they're trying to chop down the tree that is Grug. Uh, armor class negative seven is a hit. And armor class negative seven is a hit again. So two, once again, two of the five hit you. Uh, for a total of 15. Uh, and then Big Johan galloping away on the Mastodon. Ah, uh, the Mastodon falls in this this mud hole that suddenly just appeared before him. <sighs> its front legs collapse down into the mud as it, it falls face first into the dirt on the other side of the mud. Kaboom! Launching Johan off of the Mastodon onto the ground himself. Aha! Thusly ending the escape attempt of Big Johan. He's, he's not dead, but he's not on his Mastodon anymore. Uh, and that's all he gets to do. So there you go. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Um, he is... So movement rate. Uh, just calculating. So Big Johan is 90 feet away from Zerosi, who in turn is 30 feet away from the fight with Grug and the armored figures. And Ovac is 30 feet away from the fight with the armored figures. Okay? Okay. All right. So it is a new round. Little did we know, D&D podcasting requires calculus. <laughs> yeah. No shit. Ten. Five. No, six. Sorry. Eight. Nine. All right, so I lost Grug it. lost initiative, so we've got some OVAC and some Zerosi action to do. What do you guys do? Okay, I'm going to move 20 feet closer. Okay. And I'm going to just call catch, on the power. Catch your hammer. Well, yeah, catch my hammer. But then as I catch it, I'm just going to cock it back, and I'm going to use the power of the ram. The ring of the ram. All right. Now that is an automatic hit, single target. Okay, I'm gonna knock one of the one of the guys. Okay, uh, and you actually go ahead and make an intelligence check. Uh, spot on. Okay, so you recognize one of the guys is one of the is the guy from the bar. I'm gonna go after that. Ring of that the, guy. I'm, I'm right after. on his knee. Right <laughs> on his bad knee. Yeah, take out his knee. Yeah, I already I already hit him. I'm gonna I'm just gonna hit that dude. All right, ring of the ramp to him. Okay. How many charges? D6 per charge. D6 per charge. I'm going to do three charges. Yeah, right. You would. <laughs> Max or nothing, baby. Okay. So um, three, three D6. So that is 14. Okay, 14 damage. Boom! Uh, and now there's a chance that it knocks him over, and that increases with the charges that you use. Uh, three charges against a man-sized human. So, bam! It hits him, and he goes flying about 15 feet backwards. Yeah, he does. Oh, he lands on his ass and slides into the dirt. You can't say ass. Ass is okay. Okay. All right, Zerosi. Okay, I'm going to move my half movement towards Johan. Okay. And then just unleash another lightning bolt right on him. I'm going to burn a fourth level spell to cast that lightning bolt. All right. Kapow! As, yeah, he's kind of like getting to his feet this round and... I'm going to run up and just, don't think you can get away that easy. Ooh, sass. Yeah, he's sassy. I like him. 32 damage. Okay. Kapow! Lightning bolt. And he's he's actually looking pretty bad. He's been taking a lot of damage. He is quite shaken, um, but not down. Shaken, but not stirred. All right, so Big Johan gets up, ah, and realizing he can't escape, because you're throwing lightning bolts and stuff, he just uses his full movement to just run at you. He won't be able to attack this round, but he will be right in your face. Okay. Bring it. And now we have the armored men. Well, only four of them are going to be able to act because... Uh, I blew one. Charles hard. Dickface is on his butt. Yeah, Correct. Well, he, he, he uses this round. Hard. He uses this round to get up and run down the opposite alley that Zerosi had been going in. He's taken off. He's not a brave man. Uh, but the others are continuing to fight. Four of them on... Uh, oh, those three missed. And that one missed. So all four of them are swinging and ting, 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 ting. You know, 
you're parrying or is just hitting your armor and bouncing off, even though you have no armor. <laughs> <laughs> just hitting your skin and it's not hurting you. Yeah. All right. Armor class negative 11. Uh, the one that you had already hit, so yep. hit. And armor class 3. No, that's a miss. Okie dokie. And he only had seven hit points left, so he's a goner. Okay. All right, so let's roll some initiative again. Aha ha ha! Seven. Ten. Seven. Six. Ha 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 Brad just wanted to hit uh, the Rosie uh, so uh, bad. Uh, ha, 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 ha. That's the best I can get is six, by the way. Okay. So I rolled it. I was like, yes! This is going to be a bad round for us. Okay. Not for, for the Rosie, really. That's so the, the, we're just going to call him the bar guy. Okay. Runs full movement again. So he is, you don't know, he's probably ducked down some other side street, escaping you. However, the other three attack, or four attack. Uh, negative five. You have your shield out? Yeah, shield's out. So miss. Yeah, they all miss again. Ha ha. But big Johan gets to go at Zerosi with his big frost giant axe. He's about 16 feet tall, 16, 17 feet tall, and he's got a big, nasty axe. Too big for even Grug to use. And he's going to bring it down on you. Your armor class what? Negative two. Oh my god! <laughs> What'd you roll? I rolled a one. <laughs> Zerosi just grins at him. <laughs> I can't hit Zerosi. Like, I have my Thacko. If you saw my Thacko, you'd be like, ha. Ah. I rolled a one. So that's a miss. So the giant swings the axe down, and it just... Zerosi sidesteps, and it sinks... All the way down to the handle, almost, into the ground to the road beside you. Arrgh, and he yanks it back out in frustration. So it is your turn, guys. Grug will go first. Grug. Armor class one. Miss. Armor class negative nine. That's a hit. Uh, 13 damage. Not dead. You hit him. Ah, he's still going. All right. So what do we got there, Ovac? All right, so how far away is Johan? About 70 feet. Okay, I'm going to move up 10 feet. So you're going to close the gap just yep. enough and, and let, let, it loose. It, let it rip. So yep. the hammer shoots out like a... Oh, balls. That is... That's armor class three. That's a miss. Yeah. So the hammer goes flying in the air again, slowly arching back upwards into the sky to come back to your hand. And Zerosi. You're standing there staring up at this. He's, he's over three times your height. You come up to his knee, basically. The top of your head is equal with the top of his knee. But he's looking pretty rough. Yeah, oh yeah. He's he, He's got scorch marks from lightning bolts and a big crack in his shoulder from the hammer. And Zerosi's feeling rather emboldened by that attack, missing like that but is really enjoying just messing with his mind. So he's just going to give him a big old grin and be like, it's it's not that easy, and then cast Invisibility. <laughs> wow. So Zerosi goes invisible and takes a few steps to displace his location. <sighs> you had your shot. Rolled a freaking one. All right, you let's roll some shot. initiative. Ah! Ah! Eleven. Seven. Oh, let's roll again. A tie again means simultaneous. I got a nine. Seven. Okay, so Ovac goes first. You're catching your hammer, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up my pendant and cast it on Grug. Okay, so also one of the house things I've done is made because cleric's healing being a touch range, it doesn't work. It just uh you know it's. It's something that makes the cleric quite nerfed, uh, especially in, in in combat where there's just so much damage occurring and everything. If he's got to run up and touch, so we made a house rule where heals all have a range of 30 feet. So you have it, and Grog is only actually about 10 feet, 15 feet away from you, so no problemo. Okay, uh, that is 15 to Grog, and that's his daily, right? Everybody gets yep. one daily. Yep. Like. What does? What else can your uh, medallion or pendant of Moradin do? It can do a cure critical twice a day on anyone. But that's just twice a day and done. Yeah. Right. 
where I so can your do the... Yeah, your other one's unlimited, but it can't affect the same person more than once a day. Whereas Cure Critical, there's only got two uses, but it can be used on the same person if you wanted to. Yep. Gotcha. So you blast Krug with a heal blast. Ah. Yay. Okay, and now it is the opponent's turn. So there's three left on Grug. Let's see if any of them decide to go after Ovac. Nope, they're still staying on Grug. Chopping the Grug tree down. Oh, there's one hit. And two misses. All right, so Grug is hit one time. For uh, nine damage. Wow. And now Big Johan will swing at Zerosi where he thinks he is. Now, being invisible gives you a four bonus to your armor class. So your negative two becomes a negative six, which means he still has a pretty good chance of hitting you. Ha ha ha. Armor class negative four is a miss. <laughs> negative four is a miss. Zerosi actually has like a hard time not audibly laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but you can. That doesn't make you visible. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I like that. He swings and curses, <laughs> and there's, a, Try there's a disembodied laugh that comes from Zerosi. All right, so uh, Zerosi positions for a backstab next round. Uh-oh. And Grug. I mean, I'm going to roll snake eyes on these 20s. Splitting attacks. Armor class 2 on the one I hit last time. Miss. Armor class negative 6 on the hit. other one. Hit. Uh, 13 damage. Not down. Your goal is to wound them all. Actually... The three that are fighting you are all wounded because the third one that you hadn't hit yet is the one that got d badly damaged from the lightning bolt. That's a new round. All right. Backstab. Uh, do you automatically win initiative with this uh, backstab? Uh, yeah. Zerosi, using two short swords of speed plus two, automatically wins initiative. And uh, the rest of us get to roll. Four. Twelve. Yeah, a lot. So, uh, Fifteen. So, uh, do you want Zerosi to go first? Yeah, let's let Zerosi try this. So big, Zerosi backstab. does a backstab on Big Johan. Main hand. Main hand, which is the quintuple damage. <laughs> <laughs> well, unmodified, that's going to be armor class 10. That's which such I'm a miss. And then armor class uh, negative 4 with the regular one. Hit. The regular, regular damage one hit. But you're... Quintuple damage, primary weapon, backstab. Missed. That's so sad. That's four damage. <laughs> did it kill him? Did no, it kill him? No, it didn't. No. You stab him. Ow! And now you're visible. Okay. God. And he lost initiative, oh, so no, he's going to get to go at you. Splitting attacks, armor class... Negative uh, irrelevant. eight <laughs> and armor class negative six. Brad, I want to say it. Okay. Good job. Both of those hit. Yes. And both of them fall because they have, yeah, your minimum. Plus Ten your damage on okay. one. Okay. And so. 16 damage <laughs> on the other one. Good job. They both fall. Oh. So now you just have one left with you. All right. So Ovac. I'm going to, uh, since I just caught my hammer last round. I'm going to chuck it again. That big Johan? Yep. Oh, stealing Zerosi's. Actually, you already missed your glory. All right, big Johan, here it comes. But as I as I chuck it, he little John, and chuck it at him. Okay. Big Johan. Insult him. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. That's a negative one. That's a miss. I'm going to look at Zerosi as I roll this. Give him some good romantic eye contact. Yo, bad touch. Turn. Bad touch. So the last remaining guy attacks attacks Krug. And misses. Although that would be exactly the right <laughs> roll to hit me. <laughs> I rolled a three. And Big Johan is going to attack Sorosi. Oh. And that is a hit. Negative 12. All right, Frost Giant Axe to Zerosi. He doesn't do a lot of damage, I'm sure. He's probably minimal. He had only dug into the ground up to the handle last time. All right, so 26 damage to Zerosi. <laughs> Taking him down to 27. So, yeah, Zerosi's max of 53. <laughs> so now he's at 27 left. Wham! And, yeah, 
That hurts. Okay, so it is now an initiative roll. 13. 10. 4. Ah, 10. 10's tied. Roll again. 6. Ah. 8. All right, so Grug. Grug's going to attack twice on this dude. Poor dude. Oh, maybe not. Uh, negative one and a negative. Yeah, both of those hit. Thirteen. Yeah, they're, they're Brad, let me finish. Zero. He has two hit points, so Nate gets his wish. Blood bag explosion. Thirty-one damage to something that had two hit points. Yep. So he, yeah, a red mist is all that remains of where he stood. <laughs> yeah, you just obliterate this dude, poor guy. And then I'm going to sprint almost immediately as fast as I can towards Johan. Sprint immediately as fast as you can. Which is pretty damn fast for a barbarian. <laughs> he's, he's going, right, many, he's going so very how, fast immediately. How many hit points do you have left? Uh, I'm down to 76. Okay. Then. Because I will also won and just straight out from me, lightning bolt. Okay. Oh, do it, do it. Right, right across him. Okay. 45 damage. All right, 45 damage to Big Johan. And with that, he goes, and just falls to the ground, dead. Yeah. All right, so as soon as Grug sees Johan fall, what's the Mastodon doing, actually? Great ran it. off. It pulled itself out of the mud and took off. Right took off, okay. Um, Grug's going to look around for any other, make sure there's no other dudes that came out of any alleyways or anything, and then look over at Ovac and be like, as much as, well, you're thinking, as much as Zerosi's in pain right now, he's going he's gonna to come up and say, Grug, Grug, you, you uh, know how to track things, right? We should get the one that ran away and bring him back alive. Grug wondering where Bar Man went. I would like to track that MF or down as well. Grug gets down on his hands and knees, begins sniffing the ground. Okay. That's how you so track. You right? guys, get them, get you, them boy. You three kind of <laughs> get together, you know, and amongst the corpses, the ogre, dead ogres, dead armored humans, and dead frost giant. Uh, you're kind of talking about tracking the guy and all that. People are starting to kind of come out of their houses and looking around nervously. Uh, and you hear, you hear the sounds of struggle coming from an alleyway. And a woman's voice, very... Very angry woman's voice. And you see the bar wench dragging by his ear. <laughs> nice. The bar guy. And he's like, ah, ah, ah. He's like, don't take me. In the head, don't take me. And she's like, oh, you deserve this. You deserve this. And you see her bringing him out to you. Grug perks up. Grug track bar guy. <laughs> he over there. <laughs> That is a uh, that is very good, Grug. Grug, get treat now. <laughs> yes. yes. Would, would, Grug, would, they, would you do it for one I, Grug snack? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just. I will. Snack. I will buy you the next uh, eel at the bar. So she brings him out to you. I I caught this weasel hiding amongst the kegs in the back alley. Grug likes weasels, and he's gonna go over and grab him by like the what are they wearing? Leather? He, no, he's got a suit of. Uh, it's like a breastplate with like some leather armor underneath. So he's gonna it. like grab him by the breastplate, I yeah. guess. Like at the handle, like yeah. where the neck is. Yeah, of. right underneath the neck, and just pick him up like off Whoa. his feet, an arm fully extended. Yeah. And he's a big guy. He's probably like six one. Right. But, he's not anymore. But, but yeah, Grug easily just lifts him up. So he's gonna pick him up and hold him up. You know, arm fully extended as high as he can. And, and he's and he's 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 crying. He's actually crying. Yeah. And he's gonna say. Grug think Ovac should say words. No, I, I feel like we shouldn't do anything until we find out if there is kind of a law enforcement in this town. Right, he's basically waiting for you to tell him yeah. what to do, is what's going <laughs> Don't on. Don't kill me! Do not worry, friend. <laughs> My friend will not kill you unless I say otherwise. Oh, please don't tell him to kill me, please! And then I, uh, I look towards the our lady. Okay. Nice. Okay. <laughs> I go, Neil, is there kind of any uh, law in this city? Until recently, these guys were the law. But thank you. Thank you for putting an end to that. 
I guess we'll have to find somebody else to protect us. She looks longingly and blinks her eyes at Grug. I was just going to say, Grug kind of gets a little distracted. Grug, think you're pretty. (laughs) Is there stocks we can put this guy in while we decide what to do? We can just have him, this big man, Grug, take care of it. I feel like we need to uh, let the town decide what to do with him. Grug think charity work in order. I want to ask him some que- at least a question first, a couple questions. Yeah, go ahead. He's he's picked up and can go nowhere, so... <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill me! <laughs> Grug say be quiet. Okay. Zrosi says... If you don't want to die, you should show us where you all have been camping out, and everybody knows that. It's they should return all their wares and the shit they stole. I'm sure they stole shit. Hey, hey. The king's word says that we get to keep what we take from these guys. Jesus Christ. So it's theirs is theirs, but it's also ours now because it was theirs what they took from them. Yep. I feel like any gold that we find on the bodies goes back to the town. All right, so yeah, it's it's formalities. You know, he he basically everybody knows all of all the townspeople know where their their hideout is. Not really a hideout, where their base is. It's near. It's nearby. I mean, thirty minutes away, and you're there. And they've already sent people. You know, you find out they they're sending people to go get their stuff back, and <laughs> immediately they're dead. Uh, yep. So, yeah, and the the town. The once, the once uh, very unhelpful citizenry of this town is now coming up and shaking hands with you. And the old woman brings, you know, Grug a pie. Grug eats it immediately <laughs> in one bite, all of it. But uh, right, you know, they're they're very grateful and thankful. Uh, and uh, you know, the information you get from him is that he was just recruited from, you know, some some thugs in the wild to help. Big Johan, and you know he's been tr- getting all the booze he wanted for free and stuff as payment, and you know he doesn't really know anything. Um, but uh, it turns out that the what winds up happening is the uh, the bar girl, the the serving witch, she winds up being kind of in control of the the law enforcement of the town. She kind of takes over, so she's you know because she apparently was the only one with a spine. All right, so we should get a... Because it's evening, right? Yeah. Okay. So we should probably get a room at the end now that we could probably stay. Yeah. I mean, since we... Rest till morning? Yeah. Since we cleared it and everything. Grug Grug would like a couple drink, too. I, I did say that I would buy the next round. Uh, Just just as a side note, Zerosi would actually kind of like to be healed. All right, so, uh, yeah, after the fight's over, you know, you heal up, everything's fine, you know, over the next day you're, you spend healing and go to the bar and drinks are on the house and Grug actually gets lucky with the bar, go, yay, uh, everybody's happy. And, and like I said, later on you find out that she winds up kind of becoming the, the sheriff, if you will, of the town, uh, running the, the, the police force. Okay, and... With all that being taken care of, you dust your hands off and continue your journey toward Istavin. South. Yep. South toward Istavin. So journeying south, uh, Istavin is probably another day, maybe maybe two at the most away. Uh, so you're you're traveling on your on your on your mounts, not galloping, but but making making good time. And after uh, about a little over half day, it's probably at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you come across a, a scene of, uh, there's like a wagon of people, uh, refugees that you've seen a lot of, but this particular one s- sticks out in your mind because the we are assuming the mother of the family is sitting there and she's just, they, they've, they've kind of stopped. They're not, they're not traveling. They're just pulled over kind of. And uh, the mother's weeping. You know, crying, sobbing incessantly, and the, uh, you know, you see children kind of running around the wagon, playing and stuff. And so it draws your attention to it as good characters. Ish. <laughs> good ish characters. So, what do you do? I instantly run up to the mom. On your mule? Yep. <laughs> 
We're, ju- we're I'm just trotting along. <laughs> good, uh, good, uh, maiden. What is, uh, what is wrong with you? What oh, is, uh, what are you in need of? There's nothing you can do, sir. There's nothing you can do. He's gone. You can't bring him back. The greatest sages and minds in Istvan can't bring him back. <laughs> Who are, who are you talking about? My husband, Jared. He's gone. Where did where did he run off to? He was swallowed up by the blackness. What? The blackness? Like, uh... The Black Raiders? Or... No. The, the evil that infests the city. Istvin is being swallowed by the blackness. He went to go investigate. He went to go... To go invest. I told him not to go, but he went. He went anyway. <laughs> Is there any specific game the children are playing? A tag or something. All right. Grug's in. So Grug starts playing with the children. Yeah, Grug's going to start playing with the children. Okay. You know, like like you would, though. Like, he's letting them tag him. and Okay. And then they start winning, so Privately. he gets angry. Yeah. And starts <laughs> 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 they, like, pop out from Ripping the way. children apart. <laughs> <laughs> But he like you know he lets him win and stuff. He's not like a big brutal like tag. It just like <laughs> crushes crush some <laughs> three year old girl. <laughs> All right, uh, explain the explain the blackness. <laughs> no one can. One day it was there and it, it has grown since it appeared. I don't know why. It is, is it is it a man? Because we've only encountered the I the ogres I, I of blackness. I, I don't know. It's been. I can't explain. It's it's blackness. It's 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 just, it's just swallowing the city. You are dead to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> how, how far away from uh, Istvan are we? Uh, it's you could make it there by nightfall if you hurry. Is it a is it a blackness like disease curse man like? Uh, uh, I, 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 no one knows. It is. You will see when you get there. I, I just grab her shoulders and I shake her. <laughs> Pull yourself together, woman. <laughs> yeah. Grug say tag. You're it. <laughs> tell me, as I'm shaking her. Tell me what? What does? What do you mean? I don't know. You you are speaking in tongues. <laughs> He's just making it worse. She's just a, a bobbling, sobbing, wobbly mess. I just I let go of her as I'm assuming she crumples to the ground Correct. on her knees and well she's in the wagon so well on her knees on the wagon okay this this lady is distraught too distraught for me I don't I right. don't know what this she see. just keeps mentioning like the blackness and it's swallowing the city and 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 you know Jared went to go investigate and it swallowed him up and he's gone forever. So and the sages don't know, and no you one hear knows. a loud thud, and then you hear Grug fell, but he okay, and then he gets up. So while well, he's talking to her, and she's just speaking about the blackness, but we can't really get anything beyond that. I'm gonna just kind of move away a little bit, and I've definitely been to Istvan before. Correct. You're gonna position yourself for backstab, <laughs> and I'm gonna <laughs> backstab the darkness. <laughs> All right, um, so, so yeah, you've been to Istvan, and it's so, it's a pretty big and city. And I can picture it very clearly in my mind, and I'm actually going to picture up above the city, okay. and I'm going to cast Clairvoyance, which has no range restrictions. Okay. I just have to n- essentially know what I'm trying to see. Gotcha. And I want to kind of get a bird's eye view of the city. All right. So, you know, in the middle of the city is the is the sort of the castle where the, all the nobles live and everything. And as as you get further out from the middle of the city, it, you know, rich neighborhood, then well-off neighborhood, you know, it just kind of gets lower. All right. So you cast clairvoyance uh, and you're sitting there staring and you, you look down at the city and you immediately see uh, what looks like a huge black ball, just a black ball. That has been set so that it's sort of it's it's diameter it's it's equator is on the ground level, so it's a dome basically a black dome, just jet black, and it's encompassing like the entire center of the city. Castle's gone, everything, boom, and it's just there. Does it appear to be growing? Not that you can see, and it and it encompasses essentially the noble area, and that start like creeping into the rich district or yeah yes 
So I, I still have the the woman in, like, her shoulders are in my hands. Okay. Thought you let her go and she crumpled. Well, I picked her back up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do not worry. I will find out what happened to Jared. <laughs> I, I know... I do not know what has happened to him. He may be gone, but... <laughs> I know. Do not worry. I will find out what happened to him. I don't, nice I don't job. know what to do. Ovac's not good with human women. I don't know what you want. If it was a dwarven woman, she'd be like, whatever, he's gone, I'll find a new one. <laughs> That's a pretty beard you have. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you can't really get much more out of, out of her from what you can tell. I say we would continue on. All we can do to help these people is to destroy the source of this. See, I'm just going to pat the lady on the head and go. <laughs> I will find out what happened to Jared. Okay, so uh, having decided that you've got all the information out of her that you can get, uh, you, you continue on toward Istavin. Grug say goodbye. Cook up. Fun Cook children. Cook up. Cook up. Cook up. As you approach Istavin, uh, you can you can actually feel it feels like you're walking into an approaching storm. Okay, like uh, an electric tingle causes your hairs to rise on the backs of your necks. Uh, the very air you breathe is tasting sharp and acrid. Something is definitely ill, and you actually you're still you know a couple miles away, but Istavin is on a on a plain on a flatter part of the land. And as you're, you're a couple miles away as you're approaching, you actually see what happens to the town. Where the towers of the Earl's Citadel should rise, there is instead a large ebony sphere, as if a god had taken the city and left in its place a huge black pearl. Uh, as you approach, you see that the, the hemisphere cuts through the city around the citadel like a knife, and buildings are literally cut in two by the perimeter of this black bubble. About half a mile from the city, you are greeted by a Keolandish patrol. So knights bearing the the symbol of Keoland are approaching. They're they're coming straight towards us, right? They're coming right for us. We we see them. No, coming. I mean yeah, right. they're so they're you, coming for us. We don't right. Do you just wait for their arrival? Yeah, we're waiting for their word. Okay. So, so they do approach, uh, and the leader of the patrol, you know, speaks up as, as they're coming to a stop, and he says, By order of the king, uh, this land is under the protection, and is, no looters or trespassers are permitted without the express consent of the king's agent. And he kind of looks you over, up and down. After, after he's saying that, he's getting kind of a good look at you, and he says, You are adventurers, no doubt, by the look of you. We uh we have been sent here to fight the the giants and the black plague that befalls this land. He continues to look you over. What is your what is your character's charisma? Eleven. So you have an eleven charisma. Yeah. Yeah, you're the speaker of the party. Yeah, mm-hmm. apparently. All right. So he he kind of makes a a disappointed and confused look, sort of like hmm. You are what has been sent. Well, very well. Uh, I am also under instructions to escort all of those adventurers who wish to assist us to the king's agent. Please follow me. And he turns his horse and starts leading you into Istavid. And as we go, I'm, I want to say, do not think evil, ill of me. I am just a lonely servant of Morden. My friend here is the more charismatic person who could probably <laughs> relay uh, my word of my god better than I could. An elven follower of Moradin? Not exactly. <laughs> I am the single follower of Moradin, but my word is true. Beyond Moradin, we were expressly sent by the Grand Duchy of Geoff. Ah. The Grand Duke sends aid in the form of three adventurers. You must be mighty indeed. I would say we are very mighty. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to the elf. <laughs> it, it's a side note. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, he leads you into the city. 
and uh, kind of in toward the middle of town. Uh, but you know, the the black bubble is it rises, you know, hundreds of feet tall, and it's just very imposing, very menacing as you're riding into town. As the electricity in the air seems to feel even stronger now. And as you're approaching the the rich district near the edge of the bubble, he kind of turns off and goes and stays in the the, the sort of the merchant quarter and leads you to a very large mansion. And he says, this is the home of Algorthas the Seer. This is the temporary headquarters for the king's agent, Lashton. Just let yourselves in. (laughs) How close do we get to, like... The base of the, the base bubble. of the bubble is probably half a mile away. Still, can we see it enough to see if it's moving slowly, or would we have to no, be even closer? Yeah, closer. Okay. It's even, you know, even from this distance where it's huge. I mean, it, you know, it's huge. Yeah, but you can't tell. But you can't tell if it's moving or okay. not. Okay, um, and you are dropped off at basically the doorstep of this mansion. And there's there's a couple guards in the in the yard outside, and they kind of look at see. They see you being dropped off by by the Keoland patrol, and they they just kind of shrug it off as like, oh, more adventurers kind of thing. So obviously, this is you're done. you're not a big deal. The big deal yeah. is we're the twentieth in line, correct. Kind of a thing. Yeah. Okay. So you are escorted in by the butler, um, and he says, "Please wait here. You will be you will be taken. I will I will show you to where you need to wait in a moment." Obviously, you're waiting here to find out where you have to go to wait. You know, right? Yay, bureaucracy! Yeah, I'm not gonna answer. <clears throat> We're at the DMV. Right. So eventually, eventually, the butler comes back and leads you uh, into uh, a room that's got. It's filled with like ornate pieces of art, other objects that have been obviously rescued from the city. Uh, there's lots of like very wealthy things in here that have been placed in here. And behind a desk, you you see a, uh, a a a robed person writing on some papers who looks up, kind of almost annoyed by your intrusion. And he says, "Hello, hello. How may I help you?" And you also notice that standing beside him is there are there's another robed figure, and a third person who is wearing some pretty nice armor. Never seen a day of battle in its life. Okay. And you actually recognize him as he's a priest. The the armored figure is a, is a priest of Morden. Uh, no, uh, you know, so God, no. one of the human deities. You mean Morden? No. But anyway, so he looks up and he, he says, "Hello." So more adventures, I say. I take it. Uh, I need to see your identifications. What 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 purpose do you have here? Before before you see our identification, if you will. I would like to know, why are you cataloging certain art pieces? They clearly cataloging art pieces? There is a fine art array. Yes, these are items that we have brought to this domicile to prevent them being, being swallowed by the blackness. And I, how did you come across these art pieces? Did you just take them... Yes, Willy we, nilly. We went. Their owners brought them to us, or if their owners were no longer around, we went and rescued them and brought them here. Okay, I'm gonna step forward. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> take a giant <laughs> deep breath and I'm gonna head to the <laughs> the back wall. Okay. He's just go stand in timeout. Yep. Yeah. We are answering the call of Viscount Javon and the King of Keoland to help with these issues. The Viscount. Yes, he unfortunately was one of the earlier victims of the Black Sphere. Well, his son roams the lands looking for uh, adventurers. You say you're from... We were sent by the Grand Duchy of Geoff. Oh, yes, our allies to the north. Well, any more or just you three? Just us three. Hmm. I'm just fuming in the corner. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> So obviously the what you're getting is this guy who is Lashton is uh, the king's agent of Keolad. and he he's one of those people you can tell from your brief exposure that thinks what he's doing is the most important thing. Like he is it, okay? 
So all of you other petty th- people that are trying to quote unquote help are just going to be an annoyance for him. His job is, t- you know, he's going to be the one that solves the problem. He's one of those guys. Okay. Um, the robed figure standing next to him uh, is introduced as Algorth As the Seer. This is his house. Okay. Uh, he's a you know been a resident of Istvan. Actually, Zerosi, make an intelligence check at a ten penalty. I got a seven. So okay. good. so you actually you know upon now you're like wait a minute, Algorth As the Seer. <laughs> I remember this guy. You haven't had any direct dealings with him, but he is basically uh, the the sort of the sage and information guy to the to the Earl of Istavin. So he is he's part of the Earl's court, but he lives out here. He doesn't live in the court because he's he's you know, he's got a vast library and he knows a lot of stuff. He studies stuff and you know, he doesn't he's sort of independent contracting to be information for the Earl of Istavin. So and you you've heard of him. You've heard of him uh, because of, you know, you're also as a high intelligence elven procurer of information and items um, this is a guy that you might have heard of you know as a, as a source to get stuff from or whatever long story short you've heard of him and he's very knowledgeable uh, the third member is introduced as Randos Randos is a prefect uh, he is you know a, kind of a stockier fella uh, he, he was sent to be Lashton's helper to assist him in any way that he can. It seems that Randos is a much more realistic kind of guy. Uh, he's he's somebody that isn't... He's grateful for help. He, he talks to people to try and get to, you know, to solve the problem together kind of thing. Whereas Lashton, who is in charge, and you have to listen to Lashton's orders, uh, he's Lashton's go-between with the people because people don't like to speak to Lashton apparently and so apparently the king of Keolan knew this and sent Randos as a as an assistant to do that very job but as you are meeting Lashton for the first time <clears throat> he needs to get to know you so therefore he you say that you are you say that you are from Geoff sent by the Grand Duke and it is just you three hmm well I suppose I might have something for you I'll have to uh, look into it. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an agenda later, but right now I'm quite, quite busy. Algathas, if you would be so kind as to show these gentlemen out. I'm perp- perfectly happy with that. You want <laughs> to speak to other people. Whatever gets me away f- from this dude right now, <laughs> I will be very happy because he just pisses me off. <laughs> All right. Grug follows. All right, so... You are led back out of the of we're just going to call it Lashton's chamber uh, and back into the mansion proper. And Algorthas says, "Oh, please forgive his abruptness, but he is he is a mere bureaucrat, and I have to deal with him constantly. Any excuse I have to get out of talking with him is a relief." Me and you, brother, we are on the same page. Mm. Well, uh, if you do, you need any food or supplies? I can help you with that right now. If if you do, we are very well right now. All right. Whatever we can do to help you, not necessarily that mf or <laughs> in that room. Well, unfortunately, he is in control. He is the king's agent. Therefore, we must do what he says. Uh, the standard procedure when we have adventurers come to help is he will send a, a representative to give you your instructions uh, within, within the next few days. Will you be our representative? I unfortunately cannot. I am. I mean, I, I will be here if you have any questions, which I'm sure you will do, as all of the adventurers that have come before you have. So, I will be more than happy to assist you. This guy seems pretty dry, you know, he's his life is books, his life is knowledge, his life is, you know, acquisition of rare items and studying books. So he's not a very good people person. But even with that being said, 
you like him more than you like Lashton, who is like the opposite of a people. He's like a negative people person. And almost kind of like he's said this. Correct. Numerous he's, he's times. He's tired of doing this job. And he's like, another group of adventurers that I have to tell what's going on. Yay. You know, one of those things. But he's, you know, he's still doing Friendlier it. Friendlier than the... Correct. Yeah. Grug's going to speak up, I guess. Okay. We we sleep here? Uh, no. Um, uh, there is uh, temporary uh, residences and barracks set up nearby. I have converted some of the old inns that are now mostly abandoned and some of the old uh, stables as well. You're more than welcome to stay there free of charge as long as you follow Lashton's orders and report to your duties as instructed. So make yourself at home in the residences of the barracks. All right. I I guess... Come on, guys. Let's go sleep. Like, is the area that, that we go to sleep, like, are we the only ones in these barracks? This is, like, where the adventurers go, and they're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> there was just, just a bunch of possessions with nobody to claim them. No, uh, you know, you go, you go, you know, outside, and sure enough, it's just, like, two houses down uh, has been set up as sort of a, a, you know, a dorm or barracks for people. And, yeah, there's actually quite a few... Uh, some of them are very... They're adventurers that apparently came here to help out and help solve the problem. But now that they're here and they see the, the dome and the, the magnitude of it all, they're, they're just basically... Sh- you know, they're... they're Gonna die. They're, ba- they're basically just panicking and they're like, oh, God, they're, they don't want to go anywhere. And they're, they're scared out of their mind, you can tell by looking at them. Um, and that's actually most of the people that are here. Um, but there are some you know, old salties that are... <laughs> Another world-ending crisis I have to help solve. You know, a couple of those guys. Um, but yeah, you guys are... You, you get your beds, your, your your bunks or whatever, and and bed down for the night. Because it was a hard... You kind of pushed to get here as soon as you could. Uh, you got here kind of at twilight as the night was beginning, evening time. And you wake up, you sleep, and you wake up the next day. Uh, and one of the guards bearing all the heraldry of Keoland comes in and says, The party from Geoff, the party from the duchy, is looking around. Over here! <laughs> Th- this is us. Lashton will speak with you now. Follow me. I guess. And he walks out. Keep your cool, bro. This guy pisses me off. All right. So you are taking two houses back down to Algorthas's mansion, and, uh... And as you are, as you as you enter in, uh, you see Algorthas and Randos standing there. No Lashton. Algorthas speaks up. He says, "Ah, oh, yes, I have been instructed by the king's agent to explain the situation here in Istavin, and I will explain it at the beginning of next week's episode." Ooh, come on now. <laughs> and it just gets angry. That's just all that happens. And then I do 14 times 3. So 52 damage to Big Johan. 42. 42? What times 3? 14. 14. Oh, 42. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fi- no, fi- you're right. 52. Yeah, 52 so, yeah, sounds good to me. 52. I'm not going to argue. I just don't want him to put my fireballs and lightning bolts to shame. 42. <laughs> I was looking to see if I thought a spell did what it did, and it didn't. Well, it did what it did, but no, it, it didn't did. do what I thought it did. Oh, that's confusing. What it did is not what it. I did it. One it did. Oh, gotcha. Right. Did it did what he did. wanted it. It what it did what he didn't want it to do. Oh, gotcha. Right. It did what he did not want. He lands on his ass and slides into the dirt. Can't say ass. 
Ass is okay. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> balls is okay. <laughs> yeah, like red bouncy balls and kick balls and yeah. footballs. Yeah. Like donkey ass. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. You can't say donkey ass. <laughs> you can't say donkey. All right. But donkey balls clearly is clearly. just balls that have little donkeys drawn on them. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's wrong with you guys? Into the rich district or? Yeah. Yes. And then Zorosi just falls to his knees and says, Oh, the darkness. <laughs> the blackness. The blackness. <laughs> right. Ovac's going to come up. What do you mean, woman? <laughs>